Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are updating you guys on the tropics where we have Tropical Storms Marco and Tropical Storm Lara. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups in the same location. Alright, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know. How much rain do you think will be the maximum we see in any given location from both of these storms? Let me know in the comments down below, let me know why, and I'll be picking one of these for tomorrow's video. Alright, now let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at the Atlantic as a whole, and on this map you can see both of our tropical storms in their current locations. And as you can see, Marco is approaching uh, areas like Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. It's going to kind of curve back west before it even reaches Alabama or Mississippi, but there is a lot of precipitation moving on shore to those states right now, even the panhandle of Florida. I looked this morning, uh, and it looks like you guys are seeing a lot of storminess from Tropical Storm Marco. Uh, Laura is currently located just to the south of Cuba and is going to have a little bit of land impact, and there at the end you can see Cuba kind of curves back down south at the very western edge of it. It is going to clip over that as Laura is moving in a more northwesterly direction. Uh, but after that, it is open water for Laura, I would say. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the cone forecast for each of these storms individually. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery, spaghetti models, intensity guidance, things of that nature. Now, here's the cone forecast for Tropical Storm Marco. And Marco was actually a hurricane yesterday for a while, but has rapidly kind of dropped in intensity. Uh, there was some mid-level shear that really ate away at Marco. Uh, and thankfully, I think we're going to have a landfall as a weaker tropical storm. Although, impacts could still vary from moderate to even some major impacts in some areas. As you can see, it is expected to kind of skirt along the Louisiana coast. And even towards Texas. And this is kind of a worst case scenario because it is going to be able to retain a lot of its intensity. While still bringing those major impacts on shore. Although the good news is this storm is much weaker than originally anticipated, although I would still take proper precautions. Now, all of those blue areas along the coast there, that's tropical storm warnings. So we do have tropical storm warnings in place for a lot of Louisiana, Alabama, a little bit of Alabama it looks like, and then all of the Mississippi coast as well. I would definitely recommend that you seek official guidance from the National Weather Service or the National Hurricane Center on what to do as far as if Marco is expected to impact your region. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the cone forecast and the warnings for Tropical Storm Laura. All right, and as you can see here, we are expected to remain a tropical storm at least through the morning hours on Tuesday, where we should become a hurricane later that afternoon. At this point, we have tropical storm warnings in all of these blue areas. So for all of Cuba, uh, it looks like for some islands near Cuba as well. And then the Florida Keys, we have tropical storm warnings for tropical storm Lara there. Uh, and basically all of Cuba is going to feel the most impacts as far as the more, you know, current impacts and then later on this week we expect that somewhere in between texas and louisiana is going to feel the most major impacts possibly of the entire storm probably actually if it's a hurricane and then you can see it's actually going to curve inland and become a it's going to become a post tropical depression and it's going to curve back towards the east coast so that should be a big rainmaker and i'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit all right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery for both of these storms. And here's Tropical Storm Marco, not looking so good, like I said before. And you can see a lot of those tall clouds making their way onshore to uh, the Florida Panhandle, areas in, in Alabama, and eventually probably areas in Mississippi as well. And then we're going to see this one curve very sharply west, and that's when we're going to see a lot of the impacts move towards Louisiana and possibly even later on Texas. All right, now here's the satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Lara, and Lara's not looking too too hot either, I wouldn't say. Uh, it's south of Cuba right now, so I do think that it is going to be able to re-intensify here very shortly as it kind of 
has a little bit less land interaction, it should start to do a little bit better. And again, we're expected to be a hurricane later on. So for sure, uh, we are expected to see it get its act together uh, very shortly. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the spaghetti model and intensity guidance for both of these storms individually. And then we're going to start talking about impacts, wind, rainfall, storm surge, all of those sorts of things, as well as arrival time of tropical storm force winds. All right, now first things first, here's our spaghetti model guidance for Tropical Storm Marco, and there's not really a lot to say. Uh, we're, expected it, we're expecting it to stay just offshore or just onshore of Louisiana as it takes that very westerly uh, curve there and heads towards Texas. Uh, I do not expect it to take that track that a lot of those other models have it going like inland. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to head directly west and then into Texas. Let's go ahead and look at the intensity guidance, and it's basically down from here, which is extremely good news. It should weaken to a tropical depression within the next 38 hours, if not the next 48 hours, uh, and it's just going to dissipate even further by that point. Uh, but we could see a lot of land impacts, obviously, as it's still a tropical storm. And that's why we have to take this one very seriously. Tropical storms are damaging storms, and this one could bring some moderate to major impacts to some regions. Now here's our spaghetti model guidance for Tropical Storm Lara, and as you can see, the cone's a little bit wider because we're not expected to see landfall for the next 72 hours. As you can see, anywhere from, well, we originally thought eastern Louisiana, now it seems western Louisiana seems the most likely impact region, uh, with even maybe a Texas landfall. Not out of the question, but it's going to spend, let's see, 20 in about 24 hours it's going to be back over the Gulf and it's going to have stopped having land interaction with Cuba. And then for 24 hours, it's gonna still be in the middle of the Gulf. And then 24 hours after that, it's going to be basically about to make landfall. So we're gonna have 48 hours for this one to intensify over the Gulf. The good news is that's kind of a short amount of time. So that should limit the potential that this one could intensify, obviously. Uh, now let's go ahead again. Well, first off, you can see it does that curve back towards the east coast and eventually it's going to re-enter the Atlantic where I don't think it'll re-intensify or anything like that but it should be a big rainmaker for wherever it tracks over. Now let's look at that intensity guidance. As you can see uh, for the next 24 hours while it's over Cuba it's not expected to intensify too much. After that point it starts to really curve uh, up towards category one, category two, maybe even category three the models have hinted at. A lot of people have started to really feel like they Think this one's going to be a category four or five. I am definitely not on board with that. I think that at this point, a category two, I would say is a pretty good probability. I would say category three is possible. Okay. But category four and five is going to be very slim chances. Uh, although a lot of people have said, you know, the models are thinking this one's going to be a major, major, major hurricane. Uh, although it's possible and I'm admitting it's possible. Uh, I just do not think that's very likely at this point. I think even a Category 1, not even going over Category 1, can't be ruled out. Uh, but I would say Category 2 is a very big possibility. Category 3, I would say there's about a 30 to 40% chance of Category 3 status, which is obviously very major, so we're going to want to watch this one very closely. There's a lot of time, so my opinion might change. You're going to want to stay tuned, obviously, to see uh, how I feel tomorrow because it might be different. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to start talking about impacts. Wind speed, arrival of wind speed, storm surge, uh, total rainfall, and then we're going to start getting into our cone forecast for both of these here from direct weather. All right, now first things first, here's our tropical storm force wind speed probabilities. And if you're in the dark reds, you're at about 80 to 90% chance of tropical storm force winds. And if you're in the purple shade, you're probably not because that's very, very far southern Louisiana. Uh, you're at 90% plus of tropical storm force wind speed probabilities. Uh, basically, if you're in the golds and above, you have a better than 50% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. So you're going to want to really pay attention because that probability might go up as Laura gets closer. Uh, obviously, the confidence will grow. Here's the chance for hurricane force wind speed. Uh, and as you can see, we have a yellow shade popping up for Louisiana, and that's showing a 30 to 40% chance. Three days out, that's pretty confident. I do expect that that will grow towards 40 to 50, maybe even more than 50% chance of seeing hurricane force winds as that tropical storm or potential hurricane moves closer to Louisiana. All right, now let's look at those arrival times for Marco. And as you can see, by Monday at about 2 p.m., it's going to be there for eastern Louisiana. Monday, 8 p.m., it's going to move further west. Tuesday at about 2 a.m., 
even further west. And then at about Tuesday, at about 8 a.m., it's going to be approaching that Louisiana-Texas border there. All right, it's very useful information knowing the timing. Here's this peak storm surge forecast uh, for Tropical Storm Marco. We're not, we don't have the Tropical Storm Laura one yet. We will have that in a few days. Uh, but basically, two to four feet seems to be the the forecast for all of these regions. It could vary very greatly um, over very short distances. You might want to read that disclaimer on the bottom right there. Pause the video and read that. That's from the National Weather Service. You can always find this graphic on the National Hurricane Center page. Very useful stuff. I highly recommend you seek official guidance from them. Here's the arrival times for Lara. As you can see, by Monday at about 8 p.m., we will see Cuba uh, will be done with the tropical storm force winds, basically. Uh, but we're going to start seeing by about Tuesday at about 8 p.m. Uh, those tropical storm force winds move onshore to Louisiana. And at about Wednesday at about 8 a.m., they will have moved completely onshore to Louisiana. And at about Wednesday by about 8 p.m., they will have moved towards further inland towards Arkansas, possibly even Mississippi or Texas. All right, now here's the total rainfall forecast. And as you can see, if you're in the greens, you're anything under four inches of rain if you're in those deep, darker or lighter greens. In the yellows, you're at about four to six inches of rain. And if you're in the oranges, that's where you're at about six to ten. So that's where we start to see the moderate chances of flooding, maybe even major chances of flooding, depending on how susceptible your areas are to flooding. All right, now here's your tropical storm Marco cone forecast. Basically, it's going to skirt along that Louisiana coast and head towards northern coastal Texas. Let's look at the tropical storm Laura cone forecast. And this one could hit anywhere from very far eastern Texas. It could hit coastal Mississippi at, at the very eastern edge of this cone, but more likely than not, it'll hit Louisiana in some areas. And then it's going to head north inland and then curve back towards the east coast again, where this will be mostly a nuisance storm as the remnants head inland uh, and possibly towards the eastern or northeastern United States, where we could see a pretty significant area of rainfall from this one. But that's the most of the impacts I expect from this. Now, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how far apart do you think these storms will make landfall? And Falcon Doip said 30 to 70 miles, and I think that's a good guess. So great comment from Falcon there. Now, for today's patron highlight of the day, I would like to thank all of you for supporting the channel, especially our Diamond patrons, Mad Birds and Mark J. Also, our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. I thank all of you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. Also, be sure to seek official guidance from the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service as always. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.